When Superman and Batman were first created in the 1940s, their writers decided not to set them in specific real-world cities. Instead, they named the heroes' respective cities Metropolis and Gotham, with the idea that readers could relate to these fictional cities as their own. This also allowed writers to let their imaginations loose and create fictional landmarks and histories for the two cities. As time went on, however, playful ambiguity gave way to an established DC Comics canon, where Metropolis and Gotham both exist somewhere on the Northeast Corridor. Now, it's no secret that I love the Northeast. In fact, it's my favorite part of the whole United States. So this got me thinking. What would Amtrak's Northeast Corridor look like in a world where it had to serve two more massive cities? The real-world Northeast Corridor makes a mostly straight line from Washington to New York, staying somewhat inland and avoiding the Chesapeake and Delaware Bays. The problem with this nice straight line, though, is that there isn't a lot of room for two more massive cities, especially ones with coastline. And thus, when DC Comics writers decided to map out the cities in the 70s, they put them further south, with Metropolis in Delaware and Gotham City across the bay in New Jersey. Notably, the land the two cities sit on in the DC Universe is simply water in the real world. This brings them close enough to connect via the Metro Narrows Suspension Bridge. Comic book canon states that these are massive cities, with a metro area that rivals New York in size and population. It's also made fairly clear that the rest of the Northeast is basically the same as it is in the real world. The DC Universe simply has more people, and needs more places to put them. With that out of the way, here's my fanfiction of what Amtrak and the DC Universe would look like. Originally, the Pennsylvania Railroad had trunk lines going from Philadelphia and Wilmington to Gotham and Metropolis, respectively. These were linked at their southern ends via a ferry, and eventually a tunnel under the Delaware Bay, sometime after the turn of the 20th century. Both cities had magnificent Penn stations, although Metropolis's was destroyed to make room for the LexCorp Tower in the 60s. After rival bids to link Metropolis with cities to the west, the Pennsylvania Railroad and Baltimore and Ohio pooled resources to create the Metropolis and Baltimore Railroad, which linked the two titular cities as well as Washington, D.C., with a junction in Annapolis. All of this trackage would eventually be electrified, with the M&B becoming the second railroad to operate the famous GG1. The Pennsy and M&B ran extensive commuter and regional services throughout Delaware and South Jersey as well, with more lines than I have room for on this map. The Jersey Shore has always been a favorite getaway for residents of Gotham City, and the railroads took advantage. The Central of New Jersey ran their famous Blue Comet between Gotham and New York City via Atlantic City, as well as a dedicated service between Gotham and Cape May. Similar to its fierce rivalry with the Reading between Philadelphia and Atlantic City, the Pennsy found itself running competing service with the CNJ between Gotham and Atlantic City, before the two combined forces as the Pennsylvania CNJ seashore lines in the 30s. When Penn Central was formed in the 60s, it absorbed the Metropolis and Baltimore's passenger division, and began through running trains from Washington to Philadelphia via Metropolis and Gotham. While this route took longer than the more direct route via Baltimore, it proved sustainable, with lots of passenger traffic coming from the southern cities. It was around this time that the late billionaire Thomas Wayne purchased a pair of Pennsylvania Railroad coaches for his personal use. These are currently owned by his son Bruce, who occasionally uses them for charity charters, though rarely for personal use. Today, Amtrak runs several trains through this part of the country. Due to Baltimore having the quickest route between DC and NYC, but Metropolis and Gotham having vastly higher populations, electric intercity trains are split between the two branches of the Northeast Corridor. The Inland Regional takes the route of the real-world Northeast Regional, although with a somewhat lower frequency. The Super Train, meanwhile, serves Annapolis, Metropolis, and Gotham, before rejoining the Northern Route in Philadelphia and proceeding up the corridor from there. This was originally called the Two Bays, but was eventually renamed after Metropolis's caped hero, who saved a train from some robots or aliens or something. The Acela also splits its services roughly evenly between the two routes, titled rather creatively Acela North and Acela South. The Keystone connects Harrisburg and New York, while the Valley Forge connects Harrisburg and Metropolis. Finally, the first state links Ocean City, Maryland, to Philadelphia via Metropolis and Wilmington. In terms of state-sponsored routes, Mark connects Washington with Baltimore and Annapolis. Due to low ridership, Commuter and intercity services between Baltimore, Annapolis, and Metropolis have been suspended since the early 80s, with no immediate plans to bring it back. Delaware's DART is a much bigger and more powerful agency than in real life, due in part to Delaware basically being a city-state. Their electrified trunk line runs between Ocean City and Wilmington, using Silverliner rolling stock akin to SEPTA. NJT, meanwhile, operates services from Metropolis to Philadelphia, Atlantic City, and Cape May, via Gotham, as well as the real-world Atlantic City line. 
So do all these services intersect with our beloved superheroes' lives? Well, Bruce Wayne isn't a frequent Amtrak rider, owing to the fact that he has a private jet to get anywhere. As Batman, however, he has been known to brood among the gargoyles of Gotham Penn Station, and rumor has it he's planning to buy a first-generation Acela set and repaint it as the Bat Train. And Clark Kent has maintained his bumbling journalist cover persona by accidentally getting on regional services thinking they're the Acela. Beyond that, I'm not too familiar with DC Comics lore, so feel free to add on in the comments. So there you have it, an even nerdier take on an already very nerdy topic. And man, for such a niche premise, that was a lot of work. Honestly, at the end of the day, instead of making readers use their imaginations, I wish the creators of Superman had decided to stick with their original plan of basing the Man of Steel in their hometown. Come on down to Cleveland Town, everyone. Come and look at a man from outer space. Watch him fly around and shoot lasers. He's the only good thing about this place. He can save the day from Lex Luthor. But can he save our crippled economy? Even though he's strong, I don't think so. He only has a journalism degree. Cleveland, we'd rather have Bruce Wayne. And now for... Caleb's gonna read your questions. What current transit projects do you see the most success in? Hmm, either the Amtrak extension to Mobile, or else the Interborough Express, although I think it should have been heavy rail. If you want your questions answered, ask away on Discord or in the comments below. Take care.